All right, guys, we're uh, back here with a Yamaha Big Bear 350. Uh, it's been sitting for quite some time, so it's going to need a full service, carburetor clean, uh, oil change, new brake pads. Customer really wants it right for uh, one of his family members. Um, so we're going to do a tutorial here on how to remove and clean a carburetor. A lot of you guys question yourself about doing it, but it's actually rather easy. I'm going to try to get a position on the camera. There we go. Move the fuel line. Remove the air intake clamp. Phillips screwdriver, if it's original anyway. Uh, some people have replaced them because they'll strip the head out. Remove the intake manifold. Intake manifold is actually going to be an Allen key on this. Uh, it's probably three millimeter if I had to imagine. the gasoline from the pet cock to give us some extra space pretty on there okay uh, let's see if we can snake it out nope I'm gonna have to remove the gas tank and the cover as well to make it easy Either way, it's probably a good cause because we're going to have to drain the gas, whatever's left in this thing. Remove these two bolts here. This one, turn the handlebars and make it easier for you. Off nice and easy. We're gonna also have a 10 millimeter there, 10 millimeter there, one there, and one there, and it's actually missing. So I don't know if somebody's had this off once before. Let's see. Now for the front bolt, you're gonna want to use either a flex head or a small ratchet because it's pretty tight up against the plastics. It wasn't even tight, so somebody's been in here not too long ago.
I wear gloves just not because it gets dirty, but we also have black widows. So. And there's the carburetor. Now what we're going to do is unbolt the air box. It's going to be that 10 millimeter and that 10 millimeter and slide the box more so we have more room on the intake. Now that came right off. Now the carburetor should pop out like that. And now, if you see the throttle, you gotta remove these four bolts right here. We'll do that now. Now if you look, a lot of people get confused about this. Leave the cable where it is, move the butterfly with your hand, grab the cable with the needle nose, and then you're going to remove it this way around. So open the butterfly, put your finger in the intake to hold it open, now go ahead and grab the cable, work it around. and pull up and there's the breath piece now you unthread it from the carburetor here and that'll pull it out and ta-da carburetor's off easy enough Okay, we're back on the workbench now. Uh, we've got the carburetor here. Uh, we're going to disassemble it and then stick it in the ultrasonic cleaner. on the cleaner is nothing fancy it works our solution that we use that we have best results is vinegar and purple pellet and as far as our parts bin it's a cap with holes drilled in it and it works put your bolts in there clean If you have a bolt that's stubborn, uh, we have two options that we normally use. Small baby pair of channel locks and a pair of dikes. Dikes, grab it from the head like so and actually cut into the head. And then, there you go. Okay. You actually see it's pretty, pretty gummed up. Uh, a lot of green in there, corrosion, 
smells absolutely terrible. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and plug the ultrasonic cleaner in and get the temperature to come up. Now, two jets on this carburetor rather easy. Hopefully they don't break because of corrosion. Uh, let's see. Okay. Pilot came loose rather easy. It's a good sign. Pretty dirty. Let's see. Main. Let's see. I can get it with this screwdriver. Yeah, it's not really true. Okay. And we're gonna knock the pin out for the float. Uh, what I like doing is use a straight pick, hold it over, try to push. Sometimes they're serrated, so bites in. And just knock it once, pull it right out. Remove the float. Be careful because sometimes the needle will be stuck in the seat, and you'll pull the clip off the needle. You actually see the needle's got corrosion on it as well, and all kinds of fungi and. Fun stuff growing. Somebody has this uh, float height adjusted pretty steep. I'm not letting almost any gas in there. Okay. Air fuel screw. Uh, usually one and a half to two turns out, but I like playing it by ear to see how many it was actually out. It's one, one and a half, two, two and a half out. Yeah, just look at that. Would you just look at that? Okay. Sometimes I try, yeah, you can't. The rubber washer and the metal washer is stuck down in there. Oh, we had it. There's the metal washer. A lot of people uh, don't realize those are in there. And what happens is, uh, you actually get leaked by and the machine won't run right. Again, God bless you. My wife's over there in the behind the scenes working. But like I was saying, you guys can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Revive Power Sports. Uh, Facebook, two words. And Instagram, it's going to be one word. Facebook is R E V I V E space P O W E R S P O R T S. Instagram, same thing, but just one word. Okay, here's the rubber washer. Put that in there too. We're gonna go ahead and try to remove the seat here while we're ahead of ourselves. It's pretty corroded, it'll make it a lot easier when we polish it. That screw goes in there. Be careful when you pull the seat out. You don't want to damage it because then the needle huh, pull out super easy. Uh, also, there's usually on some models uh, a pre-screen, keep the glass uh, the gas clean um, it's a good thing to check and make sure it's not clogged because that'll definitely restrict your fuel also don't run paper filters paper filters uh, restrict your gas flow and the machine will run terribly uh, try to run a uh, some kind of ceramic or porcelain of some sort we have the best results with them
ahead and put that in. Go ahead and sink the bowl. Remove the spring. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the diaphragm. When you reinstall the diaphragm, just note that there's a little half circle right there. Make sure it gets lined back up in the same spot. See the half circle and the half circle? Make sure it gets lined back up. And go ahead and make sure this sits in there. Sometimes they'll swell really bad. They won't sit in there. Uh, and when you hit the gas on the machine, uh, it, it won't rev right. It'll sound god awful. It's actually another jet in there. Okay, there's that. And then one more, we're just gonna go ahead and remove the choke. Yeah, let's see if I can get it with the baby channel locks. Now it is winter time here in South Carolina, but it's actually pretty hot today. It's supposed to get in the 70s. It's just muggy. Okay. Go ahead. Perfect. Move that top washer. And then go ahead and sit in an ultrasonic cleaner. Jets down. Make sure you go ahead and put your parts in there. Go ahead and make sure you put the float in there. And we'll turn it on. And we'll come back for it and move. 480 seconds. Okay, so we're gonna remove everything from in there. Let it drain on the rag. I'm actually going to let the bowl go a little bit longer with some hotter heat. Try to loosen it up so we can scrape it out easier. Start, turn heat on. Okay. And we'll work on this stuff for the time being. Okay. Now, as far as the jets. I got pin drills and jet cleaners and this brush I find works the best for jets. Move this. Go ahead.
okay go ahead and clean the needle off just run it on the rig okay means it still looks pretty nasty probably gonna use this brush here just scrub at it same thing clean it out Okay, there's that third jet from up top. They usually don't get dirty because they don't get gas. More lines are just for air. Uh, and if you see the choke plunger, you can see how dirty that is. Just a couple quick strokes with the wire brush. Be careful, don't bend it. And there you go. And as far as the seat, you want to get all the gunk around it because once you get some fresh gas and some vibration in there, uh, all the sediment that's built up on it will break loose and it'll clog your jets. And even if you have a fuel filter, this is after the fuel filter, so it's not going to make a difference. As far as the inside the seat, what I like doing here is uh, relatively easy. Some Q tips and a cordless drill. Cut them in half because they break anyway. Hold it still. Go ahead and show you what it's doing here in a second. Okay. If you can actually see inside there, it's actually polishing the brass. Use like doing it two, at least two to three times. Gasoline is corrosive, especially contaminated gasoline. You get all the dirt that's in it and sand, and it comes through here. Brass is soft as it is, so it will cut it. Just keep going until you're happy with it. You could also use like uh, mag polish, aluminum polish on it, uh, toothpaste. Uh, it'll just clean it up a little bit.
the Q-tip attached and try to clean what we can in here. Again, this isn't required, but we all have different preferences. You actually see how clean the bowl is now, or the bottom of the gas, uh, sorry, bottom of the carburetor where the bowl attaches to. Inside's almost like brand new. We'll go ahead and shut this off. And then just scrape it with a screwdriver, flat blade, and break it loose. You actually, you could watch it. Again, it's pretty important to get this clean because this is on the opposite side of the fuel filter. So whatever's in here, when the machine runs and breaks loose, this will get loose and clog these little jets. We're talking pretty small orifices here. Okay. See it in there, we'll just do it in. Just do it again until you're happy with it. Use a rag. Again, it is really important to get this this side of the carburetor clean. Just have a final look at it. Okay, time to reassemble. Start with the main jet usually. Again, you want to make sure it's clean. You want to go ahead and put it back in there. Just go over it once or twice again. I mean, you're not hurting anything. Too clean is not going to hurt you. Uh, ultrasonic cleaners are nice. Um, you don't have to buy a jet kit. Uh, if the needle is actually too bad, you could just go ahead and buy a replacement needle. Uh, okay, go ahead and make sure she's clean. Pilot, run that through a couple more times. These offices are small. Usually what I like doing is hold it up, see if you can see light through it. If you can see light through it, you'll have air, uh, gas through it.
Okay, air mixture screw. Careful when you're cleaning this tip. These will break off. Okay, air mixture screw, and then spring. Metal washer. And then, I don't like that rubber washer anyway, and they probably floated off to be honest. We're gonna go ahead and put a new rubber washer on there. Okay, so you got fuel, uh, air mixture screw, spring, flat washer, and new rubber washer. Carburetor upside down, thread it in. And the mixture screw. They will break it sometimes if you go too tight. Don't Arnold them. Go ahead and seat it nice and easy. Okay. You go half, one, half. We're going to go one and a half out on this. We are in South Carolina. So we're pretty much sea level where we are. Okay. All right, seat, seat. Screw with the big head. Again, you could hit it with the brush. Uh, break all the sediment and junk off of it that's sitting on there. Phillips screwdriver, number two. Go ahead and thread her on in. Okay. Now, when cleaning the float, make sure you're gentle. Uh, they're super, super flimsy um, and they can break and snap. They're delicate once they get aged. Go ahead and reseat your needle in here. Now, go ahead and set that in place. Take a pin. And try to seat it all the way if you can by hand, like so. Nice, because there's no corrosion. Now, you want to check your float height or your needle seat. Make sure it's actually seating. Uh, you can blow right here. And just go ahead and push up on it and see if it will seat. And it seats. One screw, two screws, three screw, and four Phillips screwdriver. Bring them all down nice. Uh, some Yamahas don't have it. A lot of Hondas do. Usually one side of the carburetor has two indentations on the, uh, the seat into the carburetor for the bowl. You want to make sure you get those in place. But again, this is a Yamaha carburetor, so it does not have that. Now go ahead and tighten all evenly. Okay, flip the carburetor over. One jet up here. That's in. Now make sure that don't pull on the rubber because it will tear uh, and they will get out of shape if you pull too hard. 
again just clean it off real good Sometimes the draft does go in uh, two different ways. This will go in either way. Again, just make sure that your half circle lines up correctly. Okay. Lid. It actually looks brand new. Spring. Again, it's got a half circle. Make sure that all goes together evenly. One. I usually like to tighten the first one because it is spring loaded. piece of this carburetor is going to be the choke which we already cleaned make sure you put your copper washer back on go ahead and push it in started Those. I'm just going to snug it with the baby chunks. Okay, function test. Yep, good. And that's that. Next is going to be installing it on the machine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the carburetor back now. easy same process just backwards go ahead and throw a cable in there piece of your parts jar same thing go ahead and hold the butterfly open with your finger and if you actually look let's see if I can show you what I'm like close it's directional on the collar half is flat and if you spin it around here it's got it so the cable can actually go in so over the cable See if I can do this one shot. In. OK. 
Hang in, in, there you go. Test it. Perfect. Put your cover on. And your four screws. One. Two. Three. And four. Go ahead and stick your cover on there. Stop that one. Start them all. Pull that screwdriver. Just find them for right now. And go ahead and tighten them all. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stick it back in the intake manifold. What you want to do here, let's see if I can get this. And there you go. It's nice and locked in there. And the flush. If you actually see it, it's butted right where it needs to be. Now, tighten that with a three millimeter Allen key. I'm not gonna put the intake on for right now. Uh, still some other things I need to do. Not gonna put the gas tank on either. And here you go. She's all set. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and set the air intake on now and the air box. See if we get this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and snug this clamp on the intake. Oh, I'm sorry, on the carburetor. Gonna go ahead and
Okay. It's nice and tight. Airbox. Dropping you. I'm sorry. popped off in all the commotion. We're going to go ahead and set that now. Now it's extremely important to make sure all this is tight or else your stock snorkel is going to do absolutely nothing. That goes with any type of air intake system. If you leave this off you're going to be bypassing the air filter and it can hurt the motor pretty bad. Okay. And there we go. Well, next, let's put the gas tank back on. Turn the spark plug, and a rear end service, new brakes, and a couple other rods in there. Well, appreciate you guys watching the carburetor tutorial on this Yamaha Big Bear 350. Check back with Revive Power Sport for more videos. Thank you. Like and subscribe.